good morning friends uh, one request to you all guys i will not repeat uh, or recap the yesterday's okay because again and again teaching the same thing it is uh, uh, to do so i request you i uh, the whatever the sequence i have putting the lectures in sequence that you study it in very sequent manner okay so that you will not guys for uh, miss any concepts what what i am delivering you guys okay see in this here in the uh, well let me uh, one thing recap in the last lecture what you have done right we have seen the types of supports okay uh, the types of supports we have seen in the last lecture types of supports beams and shear loads this thing I was, we have seen right in the today's lecture with this uh, background okay this is the uh, what is requisite for the studying the shear force concept or shear force and bending moment okay in this lecture what we will do we will see the concept of bending moment a uh, shear force diagram and bending this is a uh, see it is sfd full form of sfd first let me write down yes this is very most awaiting topic for me okay because i am i am very interested in this okay that similar way you have to take also right this is a very interesting topic this is yes you have the shear force diagram full form is shear force right shear force diagram and bmd bmd that is bending moment diagram bending moment diagram uh, only they are uh, we are calling SFD and BMD. This is actually what the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. Okay. See why this yes first we need why we need this. Let, uh, let me let me say why we need this. Why we need we need to draw to draw SFD and BMD. Right. This will let me answer this question first, so that you will you will get or you will grasp the significance of this. Okay, this is very interesting topic for all. Right. So similar way you have to take this guys very interestingly. First, I will tell you the what is the need of this, what is the significance of this. Okay. It is a just first write down the definition. It is a it is. It is graphical graphical representation. It is a graphical representation. Representation in determining in determination or in determination means to decide, right? In deter in determining where where in the beam right you know the beam is long length right in that beam where exact in which location of the length of the beam where we get where maximum shear force and maximum bending moment occur right see we will see uh, in the in the shear what we will see in the shear moment where the maximum shear force and maximum bending moment occurs because why this maximum sf and bm we required see that at that place the beam suppose i have a beam like this okay let me draw a figure so that you guys understand see if i draw a figure like this okay uh, I will take it a little more up so that I will draw below the shear force and bending moment diagram also for this. See in detail we are seeing but just in the introductory I will tell you why. See the beams is like this okay. This is suppose my beam. It may be rectangle. It should be a prismatic okay. This is what the assumption in the strength of material we are doing right. So all the strength of material. The assumption should be the material should be homogeneous isotropic. All these assumptions what we have made in axial member okay. The plane after the bending remains plane before, right? That the, these are the, all the assumptions. Also, the stress is within elastic limit. This all assumptions are very important, right? In the axial loaded member, what assumptions you have, we have already made in that axial loaded member? 
the same here in the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram okay in case of shear loads also the, that assumptions are valid okay this should be your keep in mind that's why i taken a beam i have not taken a beam like this uh, any other sections right okay this is what the simply supported beam okay one end is a uh, pin joint other is roller support right see if i apply a point load on this beam at the center this is the length okay well and this is the p load applied on this point see in this if i start to draw a diagram for shear force sfd okay in depth i am telling you in the next coming lectures just for the introductory part i am telling you this okay here the first you will get a support okay the support see the sfd looks like this for this okay this thing i will explain later okay see in this case uh, if the shear force is like this the maximum shear force is this okay either it is negative or negative, both are the same right this is what the amount of the maximum shear force in order to design the beam i need to take this maximum shear force okay uh, with the uh, with the help of this and i uh, i throughout the beam shear force is constant right this is what but he but one side is positive one side is negative opposite direction it doesn't matter right that's why throughout the beam the shear force is this is uh, the magnitude wise the shear force is same throughout the beam accordingly we're taking this shear force right shear force this is shear force this is the internal force right shear force is the internal force how the developed level suppose if i have taken a section over here x x right this force is inter see this is applied which is externally applied okay this this force about the external force which are studying our engine mechanics okay see how the uh, the subjects of the engineering are evolved for the mechanical engineering okay similar way the other see this subject is uh, for the civil engineers and what i am giving with you lectures the subjects are for civil engineers as well as mechanical engineers also those who are giving xc gate also that 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 students are very helpful these lectures okay so uh, in even though i think you know in the chemical there are engineering mechanics only in the chemical chemical engineering right okay see if i section take a, this is what the external load applied if i section force okay the in this in order to avoid the the force comes like this okay and one force because of the support the this is what the shear force okay this see you know the shear is always acting in two directions right in the inner two this is what the shear force okay and in the beam where this shear force is maximum we, there the beam will fail right that's why we need need to study this this is what the internal force internal resisting force internal resisting internal resisting force and this is the external force which we are all applied this is external force this is shear force is internal and this is external force or the load which we have applied i think in the previous lecture i have explained what is the difference between load and force right this is external you please watch that lecture so that you can understand the difference between load and force external this is the external load or force okay this is the external force and here the internal resistance force is developed because of this beam beam having a cross section okay this is dimension shapes See, if the beam is very slender beam, that case this is very less, right? So that we have to design the shape and size, the dimension we have to decide of this beam. Okay, we need to find draw the with the seeing the with the help of this SFD diagram. I can see why we are doing the this concept studying with the help of this diagram. How this diagram comes, I will explain you one by one. Okay, in the cantilever beam, the with the help of, in the cantilever beam, I will explain you separately in the a simply supported beam i will explain it separately how this comes okay i will take up the many more examples on this because if you made this topic very good then you can uh, in the coming upcoming the deflection topic is very important because the, in the deflection you have to you have to see this how this diagram comes so you should know how the uh, diagram comes okay see okay we'll let me move again ahead uh, let's see we will decide the dimensions okay that's why we are dealing with the shear force diagram now why we are doing with bending moment diagram bmd bending moment diagram right for this the see the bending moment this is all the reference this is the data line like right here the bending moment is zero 
in the shear case also the shear is zero over over area okay see here it will comes like this okay see like this the bending moment diagram will come for this case so the beam is simply supported and point to it see this is what the area where the bending moment is maximum right maximum b max b m is max here okay at this point means the, at the where the load is applied the bending moment is maximum right see here the pin uh, the here support is pin support right there will not be any moment then the moment ultimately come at this end only here again the support is lower the only one reaction come over here okay see uh, once we get the uh, in the section right in this section i am throughout this section i am getting maximum shear force right and at the one point or one section of the beam i am getting this maximum bending moment here i no need to design the beam for the here because at this case the if i design the beam here the the, the less the, the rest of the things will be less than this okay we need to take a maximum load or maximum bending moment right at that section where it's acting maximum right so i need to uh, so the rest section of the beam will be safe if i made a de uh, design for the beam okay see in the ultimately what i am doing in the bending moment equation you know we'll study in the, in the next lecture this in the this is m y by i right what i'll do in order to study the whatever the bending stress coming on this beam i'll put the, the this m value that is maximum that is this is what the bending moment right value that the here in this equation i'll take and i'll find out the bending stress how much the bending stress is coming on this beam okay whether on this bending step i'll compare the mechanical properties right uh, whether the beam is safe or not with this bending stress right uh, first i will find out this bending stress this much stress is coming okay if whether this is allowable or not with the, i will compare this strength of uh, strength of that material right that is i will compare see you know the stress strength diagram of this material various material right this is on the stress and this is strain axis right we we know with this within elastic limit right this is what the elastic limit within this See what is this yield value? Okay, for the ductile material, after this the yield value comes. Okay, this yield strength we are comparing this bending stress. What are the coming? Right, I think you guys understood. I am at the maximum level trying to explain you. Okay, okay, this is what the significance with the help of this CSFD and BMD. We are checking what is the shear force and what is the bending moment. Okay, accordingly we are design the beam. See, then you guys are the how. Uh, we have to give weightage for this topic this is very weightageable topic okay <sighs> okay once we see the, the significance of bending moment and uh, shear force diagram we will see let us focus on what is the shear force and what is the bending moment in the next slide okay in the in short i explained what is the shear force okay uh, we will see in detail what is the shear force and what is the bending moment in the next slide let me take one sip of water okay now what is shear force what is shear force it is the internal force right shear force is the internal force just wait wait for some time not some time oh we need to put in to we'll continue Okay, first you take down the definition of the shear force. How it is defined? Shear force is shear force is the shear force is the transverse transverse. The transverse thing I already explained you the meaning of this. Okay, how the shear force? If it is transverse, then it is transverse, right? transverse internal force transverse internal force at a section 
Okay, it is the internal fork. Here for the internal fork at a section. See, if I uh, 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 let me explain it once again uh, because this is very important. Once you understood that, you will not forget. Suppose if the beam is like this, okay. This is what the beam. Right. Now this beam, this end I have supported it with the and this end I have supported with the roller and this is being supported and the external force be applied here. Okay. If I take a section over here, I will draw a video of this paper See okay. how it looks like. In the video of this beam looks like right. This is what the support, pin support and I will make it a part uh, in section of this, okay? The section of the menu and section of this, right? Here again, the roller, here the roller support and one is, the, I will separate the beams at this section, okay? See, here because of this support, right, there is one reaction. And because of the beam support, this is, here there are two reactions, right? One vertical and one horizontal. Right, and because of, see, in order to balance this, the one shear force in the beam comes like this, okay. See, the load is here, like right? the P external load which we have applied is here. The P is on this section. In order to support this, this load is comes like this, okay. This is what the shear force, this is the internal load. See, when you will, you will see the internal forces, and unless and until you take the section, you will not really see the internal load, right. This is the shear force. I'll write down it. Yes. Okay. This magnitude are same, but direction is opposite of this shear force. Okay. And these are the reactions. These are the support reactions. Okay. In the roller support case, there is only one reaction, but in the hinge case, okay, here is the hinge of this beam. This is the beam, right? This is the beam. Okay. And the transverse internal force means transverse means it's tangential to the section. Okay. See, the load is applied like this, okay, I have explained you in the previous slide, then the load is applied in the, any, to the, this or this directions, okay, this direction or this direction, okay, that means perpendicular to the axis, whenever there is an application of the load, this is the, along the axis, this, this, when we apply this, this is what the axial loaded member, right, axially loaded member, this chapter we have completed in the last, uh, four to seven, uh, six to seven lectures, right, this actual axial loaded Members should have completed. Now, on the member on the beam, we are putting when you call it as a beam, right? This case, this is axial load, right? That case you will call it the bar like this. But this case you have to call it as a beam. Why? Because you are applying the transverse load, right? This is what the transverse load. When you are applying on this the, uh, direction load, right? That is what the transverse load. See, this is also transverse load because I am applying, even though I am not applying here, but here this is also transverse load, right? Transversely means in the transfer direction you are applying the load. Okay, means if it's perpendicular to, to this longitudinal axis. The, if you lo apply the load actually, then it is called bar. But now if you apply load transversely, that is it is called beam. We will see in the next uh, the repetition of the beam also. Okay. Okay, this is what the beam. I want to now I want to calculate the shear stress on these sections. Okay, so you have to cut this beams like this. Okay, and. Uh, See, in the ca while calculating, once you cut, you can take either side of this, okay, or this side, okay, or any one of the side you have to take, because, right, why you have to take one side, see, because of this support, there will not be any effect of this reaction because of this, right, that's why once you cut a section at that section, you have to either calculate on this side or this side, okay. Okay. This is what the left side force, okay. This is left side force, left side force, and this is right side force. Right side force. You take any one of them, both you will not calculate, else the problem will really see. If you, are, you, you take them, the answer will come to zero because as it is in the static equilibrium, right? Okay. And uh, now uh, with this we will take one more point. It is equal to the sum of. It is equal. Internal force that is equal to sum of total sum of. It is equal to sum of. 
total transfers total transfer force either this word is very important either left or right side of section okay right side of the section right this is not thing i have explained you here right and just i have written the same thing over here okay yeah now <coughs> Now in the next, we will see, we will see the definition of the beam, okay, what, to what, now we have seen what is the shear force, right, also we have seen the definition of the beam, the load, the, the, in the beam, when you act with the transverse load, that is, it is called a beam, right, now we will see, see, for this, the sign convention is very important, okay, you need to follow the sign convention very properly. We will see the uh, sign convention. How to sign convention to prove, okay? Sign convention in shear force. We are looking for shear force only, okay? In the, ne in the next coming slide, we will see uh, the bending moment details, okay? Sign convention of, sign convention, sign convention in shear force, okay? Which will take positive and which will take negative, see? Uh, in the shear, how the shear is happening, you know, right? If I apply the load on the beam, the shear is happening like this. Right? This is what the shear is shearing. Is. Shearing is nothing but sliding action. I, in the shear force, I think I have already explained you, okay? What is the shear? Shearing action means, right? Here, suppose if, if this is the yellow side, right? If the yellow side is up, okay? and right side is down okay i will take it as, the, as positive and in reverse if right side is if i take a from right side from this is uh, no i will make no this side only i will just take this here and this and this is vertical right this i will take as negative okay this is if I am going from left side to right side and here if I am going from left side to right side, okay, I will take, this is what the sign convention, okay, I will take negative. Okay, this is, can I, is it necessary to need explain more than this for this sign, sign okay, see, uh, once you, I will take, uh, take the examples, you will guide, you will, if you have not understood this right now, but you will, when I am taking the examples, but this is very important, huh? else your answer will be wrong, if you take a negative positive, see either you take po here positive, here negative, it doesn't mean, but vertically upwards, if, from, if you are measuring from left side, vertical upwards, you have to take left, from left side, vertical upwards, you have to take positive and downward is negative, you have to take this, okay, while, while solving the examples, okay, that time I will show you how the sign convention comes, okay, yeah, this is what about, the sign convention and what is the shear force and everything. Now in the next level, what is now we will see what is the bending moment. Okay. What is the bending moment? What is the bending moment? Similar way how we see this is also the internal resisting load, right? Bending, write down please first. Bending moment is bending moment is the internal moment at a center. Is the internal internal resisting moment. internal resisting moment at the section.
No, it's not registering. It is just the internal. Okay. The, if we if we introduce the internal registry, then what will happen? It will be the registering is always external. Okay. This is the internal movement only. Okay. This is around here. Okay. See, whatever I am making the wrong, this thing you will remember, yes, this sir is telling that this is wrong, okay? So you don't talk registering, see, this thing I will actually hold it here. See, if I, if suppose I have a cantilever beam like this, okay? Uh, I, he, the cantilever will fix, uh, fix it like this, right? So let me draw the very proper diagram for the cantilever because as I am explaining you, okay, what is the difference between internal and external, right? Uh, I will take a slide also, okay. If I take a sketch, okay. See, uh, so yeah, yes, this I will take. Okay, this is this is a cantilever beam, okay. The, in the cantilever beam, you know, one end is here, here is one end is supported like this, right? Fix the support. This is what the cantilever beam. Okay, and you apply the load on this here. External load is applied here. See, due to application of this external load, this is what the external resistance. Okay, so the moment is coming on this fixed uh, fixed part. Okay, this is what the external moment. This is external moment, and whatever the moments coming in, suppose if I have to take, take a section here. On this section, in order to, there is a one internal movement is developing, right? This is what the internal movement because of this application only. See, if this section is not capable to handle this internal movement, then definitely uh, this beam will break at this position, right? That is what the, so in the bending, where is the bending movement? Bending movement is only the internal movement, right? This is up to now here, the whatever the bending movement coming, that is called the internal bending movement at the section, right? But this is not the external resisting bending moment, right? Uh, how this resists? Because of this fixed support able to resist this load, right? This is not the external. And this is on the section, this is the internal coming, okay? Yeah. And it is equal to the same, it is equal to, it is equal to, it is equal to the sum of moments, the sum of moments, of all the forces of all the forces either left either left or right side the same funda you here you have to use also while the, in the case of you are taking in the see if i am taking the section of this moment i will take this or this side the both will come same right because the body is in equilibrium that's why Right, this is all the strength of material we are studying with static part only, right? So the left or right side of the section. Right side of the section. Okay. Also, there is one more definition I will like to write. It is the internal bending moment. It is internal resisting. See, it's in, uh, yeah, it is, we call it internal resisting also, we can write, right? This is right. This is inter this also resisting, right? See, the, even though it is internal, but it is not external resisting. This is internal resisting. Internal Resisting. This is the internal resisting movement. In order to balance external resisting, in order to balance, in order to balance, why the bending movement comes? You know, guys, because of this force, right? Else, this force is not. See, if this force is passing through this section, if I take the bending moment over there, 
there is the shift of uh, the load on the from the CV. Then that case only the moment will come, right? That thing we already studied in uh, engineering mechanics or previous topics, right? In previous subjects. It is the internal resisting moment in order to balance external external shear force moment. Shear force, right? See, because of the shear force, this is not the shear force. So why this is shear force? This is acting transverse direction, right? Because of this for this shear force, uh, the internal moment first set up. Then, in order to balance this internal moment, we need to one additional. Uh, see, uh, uh, let me correct this figure one uh, one more also because this is this will not come because of this the moment will come like this. Okay. This uh, here the moment will come like this, right? That is what the internal moment because of this load. If I take a moment on this point, see this is x, right? If I take a distance, this is x. Okay, this this moment that is what the internal moment. I'll call you p into x coming here, right? In order to balance this moment, we there will be the setup of this external, else the system will not be balanced, right? Okay, I think you guys understood this, isn't it? Okay, we we'll move ahead uh, with, with understanding the shear force bending shear force diagram. What is the shear force? Let me first uh, check what we have done. Okay, see this is the concept we are looking for shear force diagram. Okay, here we understood what is the shear force, right? The convention we have seen. Now we will see the convention for the bending moment diagram. Okay, in the next slide we will see the classic. Uh, Sign convention, plus convention, sign convention, sign convention for bending moment and diagram. Sign convention for bending moment, not diagram, it is for bending moment, right? See, uh, there are. See, if I apply load, uh, load on the beam, okay. This is support simply supported beam. If I apply load, okay. In this case, the beam deflects like this, okay. Like this, the beam will deflect, okay, under the application of this load, right? Got the support I have here, right? This is all the deflection of under this application of the load. This is called this is called sagging moment. Sagging. Okay. Sagging. Sagging moment, okay. And suppose if I have applied load on the beam, let me take the picture so that in this we are getting clear idea right? what is right. Here, okay. If I take beam like this. And I applied a support over here. Okay. And if I apply load on this beam in this direction, right? In this direction, suppose I apply load. What I do, if see, if I apply load on this line, there will not be any support in this direction, right? The degree of freedom is there over, right? In in this case, what I will do? Uh, yeah, I need to apply one more support here, right? But see, okay, it's not a, uh, the beam becomes indeterminate, so it's not a problem, okay. In this case, there will be two reactions, right. If I support a beam like this, okay, the beam will deflect in this case like this, right, like this. This will show you here, I will show you. The beam will deflect like this, 
right this is not the hogging case okay this is under the application of the this node this is the hogging okay uh, this is, I, for the hogging we will we will take it as negative and for if the beam deflects like this we will take it negative that is hogging and if it is sags i we will take it positive okay this is not the sign convention throughout the this our uh, this our course of the strength of material we will deal with this okay then for the sagging movement we will call it as positive okay if the beam deflects like this and if the beam deflects like this we will take it as negative right Okay, okay, now, now uh, this is over now, okay. I explained you the concept of shear force and bending moment. Okay, the diagram, the shear force diagram and bending moment, that concept I will explain to you. Next, what we will see, now we will see the relation between this. Okay, now we will see the relation between the relation between this, what we are explaining, okay. There is the relation, right? See. Because of the shear force, the bending moment comes, right? If there is no shear force, the bending moment will not come. And if the shear force is, see, let me first, let me explain once again this concept because this is very important, right? We will not be understood. Uh, we, we will not repeat this. See, on the beam, I have applied, this is not the cantilever beam, okay? On this beam, I have applied a, a load P here, right? Because of this application of force, the see, is there any moment? At this section, because of the speed, no, because this is passing through the CG, right? At this point, if I there will not be many moment, but this load is passing at this point. If I go to take a section, right? At this point, at this point, there will be definitely because for this section, the CG is located here, right? For this section, the CG is located here. So, because of this force, here there will be the moment, right? That is the internal moment is here because of this force right it will not see the load is that's why the moment is moment is coming moment bending moment comes because of because of shear force right because of shear force acting at an distance acting at an at a at a distance right Acting the distance. This is what is the distance. If the distance is zero, right? This is acting a distance x. If this x is zero, x equal to zero, then no no bending moment, right? No bending moment. And if is x is not equal to zero, then there is presence of presence presence of bending moment. Okay. Okay, now we need to see the relationship between this. Okay, how how the shear force and bending moment and the, this load are related, right? Now we'll see. Now we will see this relation. How they are related? Okay, in the next slide, next page we'll see relation. relation between load or load intensity why this is this I will explain you why I call it is the load intensity instead of load right why I call it load intensity I will explain you load intensity 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 shear force And bending moment. And bending moment. Right? See, in the in the previous slide, what we have seen? This is what the load load, right? This is the load. We now we are looking for see in, in this section how the shear force comes because in order to resist this force, the shear force comes like this, okay? And in this section, the shear force comes like this, right? And because of this shear force, the external moment comes like this, okay? bending moment that is bending moment okay we will see the relation between because of this this is what the sf okay 
because of this load the shear force comes okay and because of this shear force there is the bending moment okay yeah the, because of the external this is what the internal this is the external applied load okay this resisting external moment also because to resist the external moment right this relation we will see in, in, in this how this they are related okay for this what we will do first uh, we will take see there are again see, see this i i request you guys please watch this lecture carefully okay because this, this is a lot of confusing okay uh, that's why you even though i am not talk, uh, speaking english properly right but i am see i will improve day by day i will improve okay one day you will get your very good results from my english also okay and the talking also but uh, here i will i am the whatever that i am expressing uh, explaining please understand it very carefully okay see here in this case the, we need we seen the load is uniform distributed right uniformly distributed load is there also we have seen the load is concentrated that is point load okay in the point load case we will see it later okay how there is a relation between in load intensity shear force and bending in the in the point load case we will see now we now we will see for the uniformly distributed okay this case we will see you will see in the ideal whatever the load in the ideal case see the, the, here is the beam okay this beam here the load is uniformly distributed right like this the load is ideal okay okay this is w this is a small w okay don't write it as capital w because this is what the load intensity we are talking about right this is w is the load intensity right this thing load, load, now we are applying the load okay how the shear force are coming that thing we are seeing see the load of there is a continuous load right and there is a moment and shear force are continuously varying in this case right because of this load the shear force along the beam length of the beam this is not the length of the beam right along the length of the beam because of this load intensity the shear force as well as, as, well as bending moment is varying right uh, <coughs> what i for if there is a variation then you know if there is i will take one small section over here okay okay i will i will from at a distance x okay from this and at a distance x i will consider one element in this element the the load is acting as a concentrated like that's why i'm taking this element okay i'll take this i'll this element i'll extract this okay i'll making a big view of this element okay the same the load is uniformly acting on this element this is what the dx element under consideration okay okay see here uh, on this element the one shear force comes because okay because of this load the yes will act here and in order to balance that on opposite shear is the element is very small which i have taken right the opposite shear force is yes plus see here the yes plus because of this load right here is the shear force one is here the same shear force act against and also there is the additional load w okay this is the w kilo newton per meter right w kilo newton per meter this is also in kilo newton per meter you always write this kilo as a small and newton as this is the scientist right after yeah, in the in the honest scientist of sir isaac newton okay honorable scientist sir isaac newton because of this we are writing capital letter newton okay and this is k k that is not kilo in kilogram also we are using k right so we are writing it's k small and k and this is meter okay yeah this is this what the load is acting on this okay under considering small element here because of this load under the ds the load is varying right the ds will see here the load is yes this load is because of this area okay from this order the shear force is coming that this is resisting right here because of this plus additional that is what call i am writing here okay similarly the moment will come here right one moment will come and here also the moment will come right m plus m there is a, a moment also because of this load the moment is increasing right or i'll take it take it there in opposite sign also okay see ultimately sign is not that much important because if you change the sign okay uh, if you it depends on you okay it's either negative or positive 
it's depend on you can take any either you can take hogging also for negative or hogging positive or sagging negative okay it's not problem okay now what i'll do the element what i am now now considering okay as if see this dx is very small right now what i'll do on this element which i am considering this element i'll apply the equilibrium equation okay apply apply equilibrium equation okay what is see summation of y is equal to 0 because all the nodes are in vertical direction right see one node is yes that is shear force yes is in vertical direction right then you see the shear force is upward i am taking is positive right and this load is downward i am starting from left side okay this is my left side this is my right side i am start counting from left to right okay shear left to right shear is yes is positive right this w in dx right w into dx see this is what the load intensity because right i need to multiply this kilonewton per is the load intensity right uh, in order to cancel this meter right i have to multiply this meter that is dx right it, and it is acting downward i have to take this minus right okay this is what um, the load in downward direction all right now this is this is again downward direction this is also again yes plus ds i equate it to zero right okay now i simplify this yes minus w dx minus yes plus ds is equal to zero right this yes yes get cancelled now the equation of shear force with ds the slope of the shear force gives the low intensity okay this is what i think the here minus will come okay yeah the sign of this minus is that not that much important okay see the here is yes. here is dx right see along this dx element length change in element length that dx the shear force is also changing right the shear force is also somewhat increasing 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 right here and finally it becomes yes ds right this is what the change in the shear force right we here we are looking the change right when you are making the differentiation of anything we are change in, in looking for change right differentiation is something we are looking for change along this dx length how much is the change in the shear force that is what is giving the low intensity okay uh, means the slope of this shear force curve gives you the low intensity if this is zero then the low intensity is zero right and the means the shear force is constant and if there is some value then it will be inclined right if it has value one two three this is how the shear force curve comes see if i taken let me uh, this explain you okay because uh, i don't know how much thing you uh, understand this okay this is x okay the direction you are saying and this is the load intensity okay if the shear force is constant or zero then if the w is constant the, this is there is no load right if the it is a constant value the, here is the value also suppose here is 10 kilo newton okay this load is coming on constant like this right and if this is load is variable right constant load plus this means the graph starts from here or this is what the slope gives you how much the load intensity this, this thing you explain okay now this is one relation you have got right okay and i will take it as the equation number one okay this is equation number one okay in the next slide we will see the bending moment okay this is not about the shear force. Now we will see the bending moment, right? From that element, okay? The element which I am considering is if I take if I take moment moment at zero at any section, okay? At any, at point O. Suppose I have take up this point. I will taken this point as O at this point okay this will goes to zero that's why i'm taking here okay this movement because of this here will get to zero i'll take yes into dx because of this because of this and because of this moment i will take down right that's thing i have to take the moment so it, it is yes dx okay plus m minus w dx into dx by 2 right 
Why this PS square two? Because this moment is acting at half distance, right? If I take a uh, together of this moment, it will acting at this distance, right? Because of this load, the moment about this point, the whole moment, I need to take one moment because individual taking it is very difficult, right? That's why I am taking you at the CG, this whole moment is concentrated, right? That is what I am doing here. Isn't it? Okay, minus here young plus D young, right? I need to take this moment because at that point, this is the moment is acting at that point, right? It's not a force, it is a load because of moment load, isn't it? Okay, now I, once I simplify, what I will get? See, once you simplify this, you will get, see this term I have to neglect because this as dx is too much small, I have taken a term very small and square of that is very small again, right? This is uh, w omega, this is omega dx square by 2 is coming, okay? This quantity is very small, so I neglect it. Once I neglect it, I will get S dx plus m minus m minus dm, right? Equate it to 0, right? This this get cancelled. Now, I will get dm by dx is equal to cm. See how the beautiful relation we are getting. Means along the distance change in legs, whatever the change in the bending moment, that equals to this cm, right? This is equation number two. Okay, these relations are very important. How we are relating? See the bending moment I am relating in the first slide. What I have related in here with the load intensity. This load I related to is shear force, right? And in this, I have related this bending moment. This bending moment is a change in the bending moment along the distance. I it has I change it as a shear force, right? Okay, with the with these two relations, okay, uh, once let me write once more that relation that is uh, ds by dx is equal to minus w, okay, this is what first relation about shear force we are obtained, okay, with the help of this relation, two relations, we are drawing shear force diagram and bending moment, bending moment diagram, okay. And the significance why we are drawing this, I already explained in the starting. In, from the next lecture onwards, we will take one, uh, we will take one by one bits. First, we will start with cantilever beam, cantilever, okay, cantilever, cantilever beam. Then simply supported beam and orange beam, okay. One by one, we will start with the help of these relations, how they are relating shear force movement and loading and loading intensity. We will calculate, uh, start to, okay. I think today, we will stop for the today. Okay, from the tomorrow, we will start, we'll start the SFD and BMD in the tomorrow's lecture. SFD and BMD for the cantilever room, okay. Because today it's too much time. How oh, let me see the time. What time is it right now? Yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah, almost uh, it's 53 minutes. Okay, well, almost one hour is over. Okay, I'm also tired. In the next lecture, we'll see the effect and build it for the cantilever. Okay, how we draw for the cantilever beam. They have said them the end will come. Okay, guys, then bye. Please, before going, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.